Welcome students. In this video, we're going to talk about functional groups used in organic chemistry. Functional groups are groupings of atoms that you find in organic chemistry compounds. These groups have specific names and they have particular reactions that they undergo. What you want to be able to do at this point is to look at structures and decide what functional group or groups are present for that molecule. Let's look at the most common functional groups, keeping in mind that the list that I have here is not comprehensive, it's just giving us a good head start. This first page of functional groups shows an alkyl halide. An alkyl halide is something that has a carbon-hydrogen group, which is an R, and then attached to that is a halogen. When we abbreviate halogens, we usually abbreviate them as X. For an example of an alkyl halide, I've drawn a R group over here and then a chlorine to show that this is an alkyl halide. For an alkene, your alkene is going to have a carbon-carbon double bond. Attached to that carbon-carbon double bond is going to be a variety of R groups, and those R groups could be hydrogen or they could be uh, a carbon-hydrogen mixture. Right? So R can stand for hydrogen in some cases, and then most of the time it is a carbon-hydrogen group, which is what we call an alkyl group. For alkynes, you're going to have your carbon-carbon triple bond, and then R groups on either side, where remember, again, you have, uh, you can have a carbon-carbon triple bond, and one side you can have a hydrogen, and the other side you can have an R group, both sides, you could have hydrogens. If you had both sides hydrogens, that'd be called acetylene. Um, but, you know, there's all kinds of formats that you're going to see where the R groups can change. That's why you need to kind of look at the bigger picture. For alcohols, you're going to have another R group and then an OH. So over here, I drew the OH and the R group. That is the most commonly known alcohol, which is ethanol. Uh, this ethanol is what you would consider vodka, but vodka is really a mixture of, you know, ethanol and water. So ethanol is alcohol in layman's terms. Let's look at another set of functional groups. In this set, we start off with ether. Ether has a format where you start with an R, then you're singly bound to an O, and then you end with an R. Off to the side, I have my R and my other R, and then the oxygen in the middle. Whereas your aromatic is going to have six carbons with alternating double bonds, so double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, and so on, which we'll talk about a little bit more uh, in this chapter. And when we look at this example of an aromatic structure, I have the aromatic ring here, but then I also have some group on there. When we're looking at aromatic rings, they're kind of an easier um, functional group to point out because they are really specific. It is going to be six carbons in this benzene ring, uh, where later on in organic chemistry too, we'll really expand our definition of aromatic. But for right now, this is what we know aromatic to be. Fun fact, when you have the OH attached, that is actually uh, phenol, which is the main, in, well, the active ingredient in sore throat spray. The next functional group is an amine. Your amine has a nitrogen and then three R groups attached, where those three R groups could be hydrogen or an alkyl group, keeping in mind that an alkyl group is a carbon and hydrogen chain. Finally, on this page, we end with a thiol. A thiol is where you have an alkyl group and then an SH. It looks a lot like an alcohol, except the uh, O, instead of an O, there's an S there. For our last page of functional groups, we are going to look at some ones that you will see quite often in organic chemistry too. There are more that have the C double bond O's in them, but we'll get to those when we get to orgo too. So first let's start with uh, the ketone. Your ketone has this C double bond O. This C double bond O has a name. This is called a carbonyl. And notice how all of these functional groups contain that C double bond O. So they all contain the carbonyl group. What's different about each of them is what's attached to either side of the carbon. 
In this case, in your ketone, you have two R groups attached to either side. And for your ketone, you have to have them be R groups, whereas uh, they cannot be hydrogen. They have to be alkyl groups. Because if there was a hydrogen, then that would be a new classification. That would be an aldehyde. An aldehyde has, again, the carbonyl group and an R group and a hydrogen. Sometimes in skeletal notation, people will leave off that hydrogen, so maybe they'll do this instead, which is fine because you don't actually have to draw the hydrogen, um, but you'll also see some people draw it because it looks really weird without it. Especially if you were talking about the simplest aldehyde there is, which is formaldehyde, yes, embalming fluid, where your formaldehyde has a C double bond O and then two hydrogens attached. Right? If I just drew this, I think you'd freak out. So I actually don't draw formaldehyde in skeletal notation. I always draw it out because it looks really weird otherwise. And um, this is your simplest aldehyde possible. Then if you have a hydrogen just on one side and an R group on the other, that R group could be anything. Finally, our last functional group we're going to talk about is a carboxylic acid. Notice that we still have a C double bond O. We have an R group on one side, and then on the other side we have an OH. Having that OH there makes this your carboxylic acid. On our example column, I have an OH and your C double bond O, and then over here where my arrow is pointing is a CH3. This is acetic acid, which is what gives um, vinegar, you know, that uh, sourness to it, right? Vinegar is just 5% acetic acid in water. Let's wrap up. That was a nice short introduction to functional groups. What you want to be able to do right now is look at a structure and figure out what the functional groups are in that structure. And yes, there can be more than one. You want to be able to point out functional groups no matter if you are in Lewis um, notation, so Lewis structures, or if you're in skeletal or bond line notation. Remember, skeletal and bond line notation are the same thing. Thanks so much for watching. This is Katoni signing out.